culture, cruelty, or both? Are Western cultural events cruel to animals, or are they extenuating circumstances on certain occasions? Today, we discuss animal cruelty in Western sporting events. Welcome to Hashtag Hangouts. I'm Kalen, the other guy. That guy. That guy. There you go. It is my co-host and father, Brandon. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. Also, check out our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Rumble, and Twitter. A big thank you to all of our returning viewers, as always. And today's topic is culture and cruelty. A uh, recent article that I looked at outlined a political and social movement that is not unfamiliar to us in the agriculture sphere, so to speak, uh, that is looking to end ways that are currently done with regards to things like rodeo. Rodeo is a sporting event when it comes to our Western culture. Uh, then, at the moment when I was looking at the article, I was thinking of all the comments we received for branding, and in fact, we've done some some shorter uh, clips since then, and, and they'll be released later in the month of uh, probably September. But that that made me think of some other things. And so now... I'm trying to find a good way to explain how we do, in fact, care about our livestock while also sharing things that will never be perfect. And that is a great example, believe it or not, rodeo. Um, there are a lot of people out there that, you know, they just, they they frankly hate on rodeo. And specifically when we talk about that, we think of PETA, um, SPCC, a ASPCA, um, uh, some other organizations i think it's aspc ASPCA, uh, yeah yeah um there are also people in our industry who definitely ruin it for the rest of us just like any other type of industry uh you can pretty much name any sort of industry whatsoever but in looking at it specifically in the agriculture world uh there are people that ruin it for us and they they are the ones they are the 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 minorities that bring out unfortunately the extenuating circumstances that people will film the people will uh, always reference and say, look at what this person did. This is what everybody else does. And that's not in fact the case. Um, so they'll look at, at some of those circumstances and then they will end up using them against us when it comes to arguments. So um, there are circumstances out of our control, which it just doesn't end well. And and we accept that. But does that mean that all of the times, uh, all of those events that we should end all other things that are surrounding those same similar circumstances like rodeo, brandings taking care of uh animals in general my argument and i'm sure my father's argument would be no um so looking at this particular article and it was something that believe it or not uh we've ranted and we have raved about the wonderful republic i also say the communist republic of california um this is coming from that particular state uh, it t talks about some very specific things that it proposed in the article, and, and I'll make sure to cite it within the uh, the comments and the, the information below for this particular YouTube video. But it says uh, four things specifically it's looking to remove in rodeo, specifically speaking, spurs, bull riding, wild cow milking, and branding practices. Uh, now, I... I will I will go to an extent saying the wild cow milking, bull riding, and spurs. I think were explicitly stated in the article. The branding practices I added because it seems to be an overall thing that is added to almost every article. Um, but as I move on, it, it talked. There were further articles that said, you know, it, I was looking at it and going, hey, let me try and get some other articles that might bolster the opinion of the the adversary. And another article said. Cruel tools like the hot shot. Um, if anybody's not familiar with the hot shot, it is a small cattle prod that is often used um, in in a sense using electro, uh, I don't know, uh, force. So once you hit the, you, you know, you touch the hamstrings or the the buttocks of a cow or a uh, bull, you can press a button and it it kind of shocks them like a taser, and it will force them to move forward because they feel it, they don't like it, and they move. Uh, but an article also said the cruel tools like the hotshot are used to make animals perform, perform in rodeos. I've never seen that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also uh, an electronic prod that it scares the animals into displaying abnormal dramatic reactions through intense pain. It's not true. Uh, maybe the, I, I have no doubt they might be used in the background to get animals up into the shoots. 
um but i i they've never seen that used during in a performance mm. uh other tools include metal spurs and quote bucking straps which is interesting that's a flank strap if that if they wanted to really use their vocabulary correctly uh that burn the animal's abdomen that is also not true and groin area and cause them to quote buck um and can lead to back and leg injuries um okay i'll give you a back and leg injuries because just like any other athlete which is what oftentimes pbr bulls um rough stock bulls and bronx end up happening things can happen they'll get back and leg injuries just like a football player or basketball player or a tennis player would get if they're out there performing but it's not because of the particular things that are being applied to them like a flank strap or spurs uh moving on though uh, quote animals have no choice in this these animals are aggressive by nature um yes and no they don't have a choice because they are brought into the industry but they don't have a choice and also in the sense or they do in a sense also because they might be aggressive by nature but because they're bred that way that's literally how they're bred if you look at a, a professional bull riding circuit which is pbr bull they are bred to be an athlete uh, you literally take the best cows and the best bulls you got in the industry and you put them together to make them be able to jump up and down as violently as possible and move left and right at the same time as violently as possible. And I tell you what, there is a reason why 50 points out of the 100 <laughs> goes towards the bull uh, because they're a freaking animal and not in the sense of just they're an animal, but they are a freaking beast of nature when it comes to athleticism. And, and mm -hmm. if you take a second to enjoy that dad and i sat down when i when i first came home uh, about two years ago and he helped me move into the place i'm currently living and we were watching on youtube young yearling bulls with uh some straps as they were they were testing them as future pbr bulls and wow the athleticism we <laughs> we started sitting there and we're like oh okay this is how the numbering system goes in terms of uh scoring and we started scoring plus or minus about two points per bowl and we're like whoo that's pretty good yeah. <laughs> uh but um anyway moving on uh correct they again they don't have a choice but it it is kind of in their nature so it is their choice in a sense so with that i'll leave it for what it is is it culture or is it cruelty and after seven minutes i'll give it to dad <laughs> <laughs> um well the, the 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 arguments that are used that say you know that they're super cruel to them um uh, you know, they would you say they 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 heat their bellies, brand their bellies to make them in in groin area. So they were saying they use they use um, hot shots and then um, other tools, including metal spurs and bucking straps, which again are flank straps. Flank strap are used to burn the ab the animal's abdomen and groin area, causing him to buck. And they're not also recognizing that there are mares used in right uh you know saddle bronc and bareback riding as well but um the only time where it's ex exclusively male is the bull riding event right well the, the the whole issue there is you've got people that are making arguments that are not fully informed right what factually takes place mm -hmm. a, a a a bucking strap is not designed to hurt it is designed no for them to kick right and if they've got something around their belly or around their flank it makes them kick out so that they buck better and more athletic and uh harder for a, a human to stay on so no and um using spurs um you know it's yeah they're they're used but they don't do anything other than uh their traditional thing they might make a horse buck a little bit more but uh really what they are is they're used as a, just as a tool for someone to uh be able to make contact and then use that to maintain contact uh if, if they didn't have spurs on they'd just be using their boots i mean heck i've i've ridden horses that bucked and with no spurs at all same thing doesn't change it at all uh well, I, you know, it doesn't do any different Spurs are an interesting thing too, because like you've said, we, I mean, we've had smaller conversations about this, but for us at the hash knife, we don't really use spurs for anything other than particularly gated horses and trying to correct and getting them 
them to ventral flex, which is if people think about it, you know, tighten your belly, you know, try to try to flex your ab- abdomen muscles, show show that six pack, and that helps them gait better. But yeah, in you, terms you kind of, of you, you kind of misspoke. We, the, the spurs don't cause them to ventral flex. It's it's to cause them to come out of ventral collect. flex. Yeah, yeah, sorry. to collect and to create some vascule aroundness yeah. of the back. Collect out. Sorry, of I just wanted. To, yeah, I just wanted to make sure people understood that. We, that yeah, we, I know you miss. You just misspoke. Yeah, thank you. But but in that terms, we we use the spurs as a as a tool to get to an end state, and it's not in a malicious manner it's no. it's a simple maybe a tap maybe right. a slight touch and hold to get them to to flex and that's it right. in the in the rodeo world spurs are used as a scoring tool right. because if you look at um bronc riding bareback or saddleback or yeah saddle, saddle bronc, bronc uh they 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 roll their spurs from the shoulder up to almost where the withers are i mean there's a lot of movement there and if the if the cowboy is unable to do so, they get docked points. Well, they're um, going to start out with the, over the point of the shoulder, yeah. And then and then once they land with the front feet, then they can bring it back, and they'll bring it back from the shoulder all the way back to their to their flank as they're as they're kicking. Their their you know your yeah. legs are are coming back to the flank or nearly to the flank. It's some of those are are some extreme, but at least they're coming behind center behind you, and then right. down. And, and, but the the it's the movement it's it's really yeah. used as a scoring because you know if you can't move those spurs then you get dark points but then with the bull riding bull riding is a little different because their hide's different it's a different animal it's a weird weirder way the spurs are used as leverage but it's not as a way to poke the animal and to prod them or anything like right. that well and and that not... goes back to your original point of the the flank strap yeah and and the part of the horses is when they're bucking they're you, they're they're scoring the timing of the horse do your feet come forward into into the stirrups when that front feet of the horse hit the ground? Are you yeah. in time with them? And then the same thing is when they and then when they come back on their hind feet to push forward again, then your feet come back to meet that. It's all about timing and uh, connection. Uh, guys use different techniques. I'm sure somebody's done some technique where they don't touch them at all, but I would right. I would imagine that's somewhat rare. But but with bulls, you get, those guys are. Yeah, but th- on bulls, those guys aren't spurring those those bulls. Mm-hmm. They're just they don't have to spur because that's not a part of the scoring. It's it's basically how well they stick to that that animal, and uh, not moving around a lot, and they don't touch them. And you don't touch them with your free hand on on any animal. But you know, and I'm not a bronc rider. I'm not a bull rider. Uh, I know guys that have done that and are what do well at it, and they see some of the nuances that I I don't necessarily see in the scoring because they did it and because they were scored on it so much and, and uh, part of the sport, but um, there's, there's no part of that in in the bull riding where that hurts the bull. And if you've ever seen how thick a bull hide is, (laughs) yeah, I mean, yeah, it can be argued that maybe the horse hides thin or thinner, kind of like our skin is about like the same as our skin, but it, they're certainly not there to hurt these animals. Uh, These animals need to be used over and over again. And so to say that it's cruel, uh, do you ever watch some of these, especially the rough stock? And the thing that you can have the least amount of uh, physical training on, I call it training, is a bull. What right. happens when that, when that bull unloads somebody and that, and the horn blows? A lot of times they quit bucking. Right. You know, I mean, they they're like, okay, and, they're, and they're looking for the gate and they're like, okay, I'm done. Oh, that, that was yeah. a good show. You know, so <laughs> it's all part of the, part of the job for them and and you know the argument that that their backs and and legs hurt you think about how much actual time these animals are performing and that means coming out of a shoot and then with and bucking and having the you know and these guys are not big guys on on these bulls they are generally smaller guys so you know they're they're 150 160 pounds they're not 230 pounders like i am and so the amount of, of uh, stress on those animals is minimal. So you take an eight second ride, they're probably in that arena, maybe a minute. How they don't do practice runs. They, you know, when they do and they're proving them, but these bulls are being ridden during these performances and that's it. So right. the amount of time that it would take to build uh, 
say for instance shin splints on a on a human if you've ever played sports and had shin splints how long does it take to develop those it takes a lot of time and it takes practice and you're talking hours of practice over many days where you know i don't know i don't know if a, if a bull would buck my god would they would they have even an hour's worth of total time during their uh, lifetime yeah that's eight, a that's a, at, a at good question you know i mean you how know, many times I'm, been bucked out? I'm thinking of some greats and i'm talking especially because i know bull i know bulls better than i do bronx i'm not gonna lie uh okay. but um i'm thinking yellow jacket little yellow jacket his his prodigy um mickey bodacious. mouse hammer bodacious bushwhacker yeah um th- there's been some in the recent years some freaking killers and yeah. let's think of Ye- little yellow jacket everybody now to this day they start to think of little yellow jacket as one of the big ones the only reason bodacious was so deadly and anybody can look up bodacious and tough head uh hit him in was because tough was a great example of what bodacious could do and it was he would go down and come straight back up and force your chin and jaw straight into the hump of his back and it would just blow you off and i'm not kidding like physically blow you off of his back because he was so good at going down and coming straight back up and just destroying your face and tough hitman has a neck and jaw injury because of said animal um and he's an amazing athlete one of the longest reigning careers I've been doing some quick Google searches while you're talking was little yellow jacket from August 20th, 1996 to September 19th. So almost to the date year, but year to year, 2011, which gives you uh 15 years. You take 15 years times, you know, eight seconds at a piece. I think you're, you're on like, has, did he really even perform an hour right. in his entire life? Right. I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, that's but, a lot. That's a lot of bucking, you know, oh, you know, so, but, but you're absolutely right. Cause they're, they're, they're going back to the back, the back and leg injuries that was cited in some of these articles. They're also athletes. Like it's, it's what they do. They're it's what they're bred right. to do. They do it. Day well, in and, day that, out. and that doesn't necessarily mean if they, if they become injured or lame, that doesn't necessarily mean it's from that. Mm-hmm. They could they could have a congenital issue, right? They could have bad feet. You know, you can get some genetics um, uh, going there that cause uh, some kind of a malady. That's possible. Um, shipping that can happen anytime. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. these animals are not being tortured right. because they are valuable to their owners. Oh yeah, it's I just mean... stupid, and and they're actually valuable to the guys who are trying to ride them because they want these animals at the peak of their performance. Because they want to be able to ride them when they're at their best, so that they could they can claim, look, I am the best. It gets them more points. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm trying to look real quick, little yellow jacket, because we were talking about him, what his overall career cost was. I'm I'm not getting it. Um, but if anybody is curious, these bulls are they're babied too. By the way, they are well taken care of. <laughs> They have a better life ro- than I do for sure. Oh yeah, these ro- <laughs> this, all of these rodeo stock animals are very well taken care they, of. They they make their owners millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. and why, those owners, you... yeah, it's I I mean you think of you think of if anybody's familiar with we've talked about this briefly before, but horse racing, you know, think of Secretariat, you know, Triple Crown winners. Right, they win that Triple Crown, that coveted Triple Crown. They suddenly okay, they might run one or two more races. But that's it, and they go if, out the pasture. I'll bet and... you get it. If you get a triple crown winner, I bet they are done. Especially if they're a stallion and they are standing, and they are they are donating semen for the rest of their life. Right. Well, and and sometimes they do run one or two more, but it's typically yeah, that's exactly what it is. They have a baby life. It's a padded cell. They can come in and out as they please. <laughs> they, they run the place. <laughs> yeah, they they get to. Do it literally they want. is a golden goose, is what it really is. One hundred percent, and that's yeah. and that's exactly what some of these bulls are like. Right, like I said, Yellow Jacket, because he sired Little Yellow Jacket. He he was one of the he was up there with Bodacious and and uh, Red Rock, uh, famous for the ride. I think it was the five or six ride event with Lane Frost. Um, but he was around the same time era and those bulls 
you know, sired the next generation. The next generation right. has now come to fruition to the third generation. And you're looking at some of the best bulls that have ever, ever performed in the PBR. And it's because they are baby. <laughs> they they, right. they are giant little, believe it or not, if you watch some of the behind the scenes stuff with the PBR, they are freaking, they they're are characters. Pets. Yeah. They, they're, they are pets up until they get a flank strap on them. Then they go out, they perform. They know what seconds, they're doing. And then they're like, okay, I'm good. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, those guys are scratching their ears and loving mm-hmm. on them and, and rubbing on them, and they love it. I mean, it's, yeah, they these people are, again, they don't understand something that they want so badly to have the power to stop. Yeah. You know, and, and rodeo's been going on for over, you know, it's 150 plus mm-hmm. years. Yeah. And, to, and, it's, and it really is about uh, a cultural thing that has become a sport. It mm-hmm. wasn't a sport to begin with. It was just something the cultural the guys did to pass some time and hey, are you see how good to they get are. On this bull, let's right. try it. <laughs> yeah, I can. I'm a better rider than you are. Really? Let's yeah. let's get it on. All so, right, what's the bet? You know, a bottle of whiskey? Done. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Or their their whole paycheck, you know, for thirty right. days. Oh, I got thirty dollars here. Dollar a day. I mean, those yeah. were those were wages my grandpa made. A dollar yeah. a day, and uh, a little bit of tobacco. That was their wages. So, um, yeah, that, that's, it's just ludicrous, uh, the arguments they make, um, hot shots. Yeah. You know, if you want to deliver a shot, I'm not a big fan of me either, but usually when I was a kid, we used to get in hot shot fights <laughs> and you know, they do hurt. Yeah. yeah. But it's an electric shock kind of like, but it is, I mean, it's not an extreme one. I mean, why would, again, why would you do that? All it's designed to do is just to get that animal to move away from the shock. Well, I'm not a fan would, of them. We don't have one, any here on the place because I don't like handling our cattle like that right. because it makes them jumpy. It makes them not want to be around you. So mm-hmm. why would I do that? Well, um, and I, I'd argue too, like what we talked about is as much as those bulls are babied and some of those riders are familiar with those bulls. You know, you mm-hmm. look at a world champ, multi-world champion like J.B. Mooney, right. he'll go in the background, you know, the back pens and he'll pet his bull talk to him be like he can't get me some points <laughs> right you know? and he'll he'll be he'll be scratching their ears but when they're that friendly like how are you going to entice a bull to move forward a, a two thousand pound animal or uh, other than, two thousand plus some of these yeah. and and i mean an athlete at that they're just going to look at you and be like dude i'm not moving and sometimes right. i think it's that's one of the cases and okay maybe you are justified in using a hot shot because they know the system and right. they're just like, I'm not moving. So you right. have to use something more than just what you physically as a human being can do. There's nothing you possibly do. That's, yeah. that's really, to me, that's the only justification. I'm, I'm sure somebody else. Now I would just about that's where I would go. Now I would just about bet you those hot shot use or that hot shot use is limited to those bulls. You don't put a lot of hot shots oh, on yeah. a horse. You do not do no. that. And no. I'll bet none of those horses are, are hot shot. And if they were, somebody's going to get a broken nose by the owner well and those horses and here's the other thing too people should understand the mentality of a horse and a, and a cow is completely different and yeah. to do that to a bull is one thing to do that to a, a horse is completely different because horses are a little more think of your crazy ex-girlfriend and that's probably as close as you're going to get to a horse <laughs> like, oh my they're, god they're a little they're a little squirrely you know <laughs> uh, there's great horses there's a lot of great no there you are just, but i i think just horses are, in my opinion they they tend to be more they tend to be more flighty for sure well, well yeah but they're smarter too they're, let's face it uh, yeah equine are smart much smarter than than bovine and that's why they're crazy so well but i mean that's that response to a hot shot you just don't do that because you're 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 teaching them and you're eventually you're going to get on them and maybe it's a horse you would never put a hot shot on a horse that's trained to uh to ride i mean if you did you're you're a moron that would that just i can't even see that happening i've never seen anybody i've never seen anybody use a hot shot on a horse i'm glad i'll be i'll be 100 percent honest i've never seen anybody use a hot shot in period but that's because because you never grew up around them yeah no i worked i worked on our place and yes. uh, and i've helped the uh our friends over in uh yeah. valentine and or actually technically pompey's pillar uh but nowhere nowhere in between there has yeah. there ever been a hot shot truck, truck drivers tend to have hot shots with them because they never know what kind of cattle how people handle them what they do to them but i've also seen truck drivers back up to load some some calves up 
and pull a hot shot out. And I've seen the guy who owns place go put it away. We don't use them here and they'll put them away. And yeah, you know, well, that's also a truck driver that probably doesn't know how to handle cattle in the first place. And that's why that they can have a happen. Hot shot. That can happen. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. And they're just all about getting them loaded and get out of here. So we're getting away from the rodeo part of that, but I, I, the, the argument that these animals are tortured and that's really what they're implying is it's torture. Right. They're out of their minds. I mean, that no <laughs> no <laughs> well i mean that i mean that can go to something completely different too is uh it, it's not what i hadn't planned in in terms of the conversation but let's talk about it, is torture in general when it comes to livestock uh somebody might say hey you own a horse ranch or a cattle ranch you have them penned up they are in an enclosure of some sort how do you not technically torture them? In fact, you have barbed wire. Barbed wire has right. uh, barbs on the fence that, in, in fact, they are built to keep the animals from getting out of the fence because if they touch it, they will get prodded, poked, and or scraped. And, of course, we've had to deal with that. We've shown mm -hmm. some videos in the past on our YouTube channel, the repercussions of barbed wire and or fence posts. But that's the other argument too is the torture of animals of livestock within the agricultural industry what would you say to that versus that compared to okay this is part of our culture this is how we handle it this is just part of the industry what what would be probably one of your your better arguments against what the i guess the the plaintiff would have to say <laughs> well yeah, I, I guess the thing to say is if you don't like what, what is being done with them, if you've got a, let's say you've got a 160-acre uh, pasture, a quarter section, and we, you've got horses running in that, and you think it is so egregious that you have barbed wire around that, tell you what you do. You pay for the fencing that you would like to see go up around that. Mm. If you If you feel that strongly about it, you put that up, you put the fence around there and I'll, I'll use it as long as it doesn't hurt them. And as long as it's effective. Yeah. And, and cause really barbed wire is, or even smooth wire. That is what is the most, uh, cost effective, but actually does the job. You know, there, you can, you can have some kinds of fences that it just, they just don't, it doesn't work. You know, well, it's not we've had that anymore. issue with, smooth wire how about electric I mean, fence electric fence works what's the problem there if they get if they put their nose on it they're going to get bit with a little bit of electricity works. now that is where you can use that with a horse but you're not using that on them they are doing that to themselves right. and they're learning what those boundaries are and it is very it's very low voltage about like a hot shot actually it's not it's <laughs> it's it's not high voltage it's not going to hurt you it, it, it it's it snaps or bites you a little bit but it certainly is not uh, debilitating. So, you know, we use what we can use that's most cost effective and effective in its use. So, you know, that's just a tool. It's whatever you use. How about, how about, you know, their fish? Do these, some of these people have tropical fish? Uh -huh. Do they have them in a cage? Do they have them in water? Do they change that out? How do they treat, a, you know, do they have a dog or a cat? How do they treat them? Do they make them stay in the house at night? Hmm. Doesn't seem like that animal's got much of a free range, does it? So, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of hypocrisy and I'm sure there's some people that absolutely don't, they don't have any animal whatsoever. I'm, I'm sure of it. Uh, there's going to be somebody out there that's just so adamant and such a zealot about, you know, freeing everything that they don't, they don't do it. But do they, do they kill a fly? Do they kill mosquitoes? <laughs> Those are living yeah. animals too. You know, I mean, so the, the, there there comes a time when they engage in some of the things and and you know none of us kill these animals unless it's for food you know it's a whole different purpose it sure isn't rodeo and cultural sport uh that we have but um some of these animals are food and you know what frankly they may end up as food if they you know they no longer are useful uh they get a, a really good life and pampered well and at the end of their life they can't do the job anymore then they may go to slaughter and what a better way to, to do than to have a life like that, a really good life. And it's not a lot different than the ones we want for ours, which is have a good, healthy life, 
uh, stress free. These and these animals, yeah, they probably got some stress, but they've also got some. They've got fun. They're having fun at this, and they like their job and doing that. Right. And then it end up with a, a, a humane, ethical death to feed people. What's the point? What's bad about that? Well, and, and to be clear too, going back to like the PBR bulls and like triple cow, crown, triple crown stallions, they they live a natural life up until the very end. Yeah. They the only time right. they might be euthanized if the owners recognize they will be dying shortly and it'll be more painful. Then they'll have a vet yeah. euthanize them. But other than that, then it's, then it's an ethical issue, right? Yeah. Um. But now moving on to wild cow milking you I, it's probably actually, sexual probably sexual assault is what they're you know going on for some of that i mean it's possible but you i've actually never been to a ranch rodeo i would love to at some point i know they're far better than just a regular rodeo because they tend yeah. to be more entertaining they're more like wholesome in a sense you've been to them but you were pretty little when when okay. we went yeah yeah you don't remember a little, much of a little tyke they're, um they're, yeah but they're entertaining they're way entertaining they're what, fun in in fact that's the thing though is like wild cow milking was one of the particular events that was pointed out as being inhumane why do you think that might be is it because of the the nature in which they they catch the cow and then they have to like try and it, capture the milk <laughs> yeah generally what they do is you, you it'd be like a a four-man team or three-man right. team or whatever it's a team. Yep. it's a team and one of them has a usually looks like a pop bottle in their hand because yep. that makes it even even harder to do um so they just hold the animal they hold that literally hold them down and while they're standing so they don't move so you got three guys that are they got a cow by the head and they're grabbing it and holding it any way they can and they got the fourth guy going back there and trying to not get kicked you know because yeah. if, you, if you've ever milked a cow that's kicking oh god which is part of the entertainment you know it's all fun and games when i'm sitting in the grandstands mm -hmm. watching this take place you know and uh then he's trying to trying to milk milk this cow and you get all the milk in this in this uh bottle and then they go and they pour the bottle into a a cup that's got a measurement of so high and the first one to get you know usually fill that cup to that mark they win it's purely entertainment has this have you ever had to uh uh restrain a cow and milk it sure we have we yeah. usually do it in a in a shoot with a head catch we, you know, we have we get, things we working in, in our favor yeah yeah exactly some tools uh not three big strong dumb guys uh you know <laughs> and all of who's dumber the guy with the bottle because he's he's in some serious uh range with a cow kick and and uh i'll tell you what that can hurt they can break an arm oh. anyway uh but, you know, that's it is something that is, again, a sport now that was taken and still is done uh, out of necessity to, you know, milk a cow out and get the colostrum out of her on uh, that when she's fresh to try to get it to a calf and save this calf's life or just, you know, have to continually milk her out because the calf's not not figured out how to suck yet. So it's just a variation of that practical tool. That's all it is. Well, and. And and what I should go with is, you know, this this cow for the event may or may not because normally in a in a ranch event like this ranch, uh, ranch rodeo event they'll have probably three or four cows out in the arena at the same time and the crews have to do it simultaneously because it's whoever gets it done first wins and they'll it's blow a, a horn and all it's of a sudden race. guys yeah. they they blow out they try and grab their cow and do their thing, um. The, the question I guess would be from the other side would, is this not harassment to the cow? Is this not undue unnecessary stress to the animal? Uh, you're taking milk from an animal that should probably be going towards its calf. Um, the nice uh, part uh, about this is that there's not just a limited supply of milk that cow continues to milk and make more milk when you milk them. Yeah. But, but that's my point is, you know, yeah. all of these things I've been listing and, and to kind of finish with, with this in a, in a rodeo sense, I've got one more topic, but to finish this in a rodeo sense, how, how is this not cruel versus taking a cultural event and just extrapolating it and saying, Hey, it's culture, get over it. You know, where, where's that line to explaining somebody who who may not be part of what we come from or where we're at 
and trying to explain to them like, yes, it is cultural, but at the same time, it's, it's really not cruelty. Um, well, trying to get you, them to understand our, our perspective, I guess. I, yeah. And about, I, I think you have to really define cruelty and it's, you have to come to a, to an agreement of what, what is cruel. I don't know. Right. What does Webster say? What cruel is, you know, I mean, I'll inhumane, inhumane treatment. Well, guess what? They are not humane. They are not human. They are bovine for one. But is does it do any temporary or permanent harm to an animal, physical harm? I think is probably uh, really where it's going to be defined. Now, Here when you, you start Cinnamon, talking... Synonyms are atrociousness, atrocity, barbarity, bar, barbarousness, uh, brutality, cruelness, fiendishness, heartlessness, um still yeah. doesn't say what it does to the animal many of cruel is disposed to inflict pain or suffering devoid of human feelings humane feelings how to use cruel incense yeah so uh pain to to purposely inflict pain or suffering devoid of humane feelings that's probably the right. best answer i got for you yeah which you're anthropomorphizing humane feelings onto a cow yeah but you know what if you were doing something like I, I don't know um something that would that would uh that would inflict pain and leave a mark cause bleeding something like that um cause them I mean, to limp you know, even so lancing a jaw we look at that and we're like oh that looks like it's full of pressure it doesn't feel mm -hmm. good and then when we go to cut it we're like it's i'm sorry i don't yeah. want to do this but I know it's bet it's best for you because if it right. was me, I would say lance it, you know. Right. Right. Yeah. And and you know, so to me it's it's like you you, you can call anything cruel. You just say make your own definition of what cruel is. Yeah. And that's what it is. And that's kind of what they're doing there. I mean, these animals are not suffering any any temporary or permanent damage. And when you start talking about emotional pain, now that is true anthropomorphizing, you know, what animals are we putting our emotions or what we feel into an animal? And, and you can kind of do that, I think, too. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe the cow likes it. She, you know, those are usually wild cows. They're not, these aren't typical rodeo stock. Generally, right. these are cows that are taken off of range and their calves are right nearby. Uh, and they just pull a calf away from them and do this event. So it's still, it's, you know, as long as you're not hurting them, who cares? Again, it's, it's still a, it's a variation of, of something that you actually do on a ranch. A, a final point that I'd like to bring up is, is branding. And I don't, I, I apologize to any viewers who are like, man, I've heard this conversation so many times. Um, I think it's important though, because it seems to be the one thing that we constantly seem to be fighting against because I on the YouTube channel, see this question and this comment time and time and time again. Um, a very cultural event for us is every year in the springtime, we brand our calves. In fact, we brand our calves and our horses with hot irons. That means the iron goes up against the flame. It gets hot enough. In fact, it's cherry red by the time we try to apply it to the skin. Rose red. Rose red. There you go. <laughs> and we apply it to the skin and it might cause a little bit of a fire, but it's not going to turn the animal on fire, so to speak. That happens only if and only if you apply a alcoholic topical to their skin and hide and then brand afterwards. We always do if we are going to do that, which is oftentimes the lousing uh medicine and stuff like that we do that after we've branded so that they, they do not in fact get on fire yeah um, that would be you can you can make the hair burn on its own if the if the iron is too hot right. and you don't right. do that yeah i mean you just manage your manage your fire cherry red's a little bit too much you're approaching that rose red is where you where you want to be on the on the color of the metal right and 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 where i'm leading to that though is it's a yearly event that not only is it cultural because we have a big event surrounding it and we've shown it on YouTube a couple of times but also it's important in terms of identification of the animals yeah. both both horses and cows but then we have people on the other side of the agricultural perspective to say again these are 
cruel. These are invasive. These are purposely hurtful towards the animals. And I would like to get your opinion as to um, how exactly do you balance a cultural event with a not only a legal requirement, but also trying to look out for the most humane and beneficial way for the animal, him or herself as well. Well, you, you do it as, just like you said, you do it as, as quickly and humanely as possible. And at the same time, we're generally giving them vaccinations that are getting the free health care yeah. and looking them over and, you know, doing a health check on them and uh, uh, setting them up so that they're going to a fresh pasture to gain weight. You don't gain weight if you don't, if you aren't healthy. And so we're right. trying to get these animals healthy, protect them from disease. Um, and then also we have, you know what, we put, we put tags through their ears. Uh -huh. That's pretty cruel, but. People do too. They stick things through their ears. It's not. It's no different, really. And the, and we do things that, that uh, to reduce the stress. Like instead of and you didn't mention it is that we don't normally castrate the right. uh, bull calves we while we brand. That's normally when you do that when you brand. But we do that. We we put bands on them within a day or so of them, uh, you know, being born. So they don't even. They don't even really know it, what's going on. So um, lower stress works good and all designed for the benefit or the betterment of the animal. I'd, I'd love to have a good bunch of Rocky Mountain oysters every year, but, you know, we've, we've decided that, you know, we're going to go with the best interest of the animal and ban them instead of castrate them. So we've, that's, that's why we don't end up with oysters anymore. Right. Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> Now I have to go to the restaurant to get that. <laughs> really go buy them. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> yeah. Now, the final thing I would, I'd like to say is, uh, you know, we, we're, we're talking about the, the delicate balance of culture culture and cruelty. Uh, rodeo, there's, there's a lot of culture involved with that. What we just talked about, branding, there's a lot of culture that comes from it, and it, it's it's grounded in culture. What is the balance between between being too cruel to an animal and the culture slash requirement legal requirements of the animal? We just talked about branding, for example. Branding, you know, there's a requirement to identify your animal. There is a way in which there are multiple ways in which you can go about identifying your animal, whether it's a hot iron or a freeze brand. Uh, there's you know different locations and so on and so forth for like yeah. horses jaws shoulders hips or for cows shoulder uh rib or or thigh actually it's it's hip it's, for it's cow hip thigh for cows, like, yes um but then but you know there's all these different locations there's you know the way in which you can apply where where do you draw the line between cruelty and culture? Because there are other people within the agricultural industry that aren't like us, that they just don't care about their animals and they will inflict pain. And whether it's intentional or not, they just don't care. And so where, where is that, 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 that fine line between actually being part of your culture, taking care of the animal and making it as humane as possible while also fulfilling your legal and moral requirements versus saying, I just don't care about the animal. I'm just doing what is important important to me and i'm moving on yeah well to clear clear one thing up you don't have to brand your cattle and you don't have to brand your horses you're foolish if you don't because i'm telling you you take those to a stockyard and you don't have your animals branded and you got some nice thrifty animals and somebody else doesn't brand their animals and they bring in some scrubs all they have to do is go down and swap the tags that come in and all of a sudden they own what you yeah. brought in and you own what they brought in so that is, yeah, that's crazy to to not identify your animals in a in a physical way that can't be altered. Um, the 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 fact that there are people that are not kind or are are rough on their animals, that's true. I'm sure that happens. Um, but mismanaging what they do costs them dollars. Because if you've got an animal that's stressed, they don't mm -hmm. produce for you. And the argument about cows, uh, dairy cattle, you know, we're kind of getting off there, but it's the same thing. 
dairy cattle are a really good example of people in the that that hate on them all the time about how they keep them locked up you know they 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 force them to give milk and yeah they're milking them but you know what it is is very well documented very well proven that a content cow a cow that's happy produces more milk mm. more milk mm. is more money and so the the extremes that some of these uh good dairy farms go to to keep those cows happy and those cows they come in and they want to eat and they get a little something to come in and eat and then go into a their stall to be uh milked and they stand there you know it's it's like clockwork um and animals well, and I'll, not I'll, content I'll, I'll is going to do that i'll add to that there's there's interesting i i did see a dairy farmer on uh youtube i think at one point he was showing how he's got a system where he works uh 100 to 150 cows at a time he's dairy farmer from wisconsin mm. they have they have rfid uh mm -hmm. tags and they go through a scanner and the scanner will feed them cookies what he calls cookies what we call sure. cow cake cake yeah G gives or them pellets or whatever it's a, it's a yeah. supplement it's a, it's a supplement it's a goodie that they enjoy and they get to eat that while they get milked and he said mm. it's funny because the cows will figure out when they go through the scanner that they will get locked up and they'll get um, attached to and sucked on to, to get the, the milk out of them and they get their little cookies. And he said, it's funny because what you will see is certain cows will find figure that it out. they'll figure it out faster and they'll try and go through that thing as many times as possible. But the problem is for them, the computer system has them on a timer for a specific sure. reason because they have to have a <laughs> milk production quantity, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And so they won't be able to be milked for like six hours, but they'll try and go through that thing three or four times. So they'll go through and their RFID tag will click off and like, nope, you're not going to get through. And they just push them through. And That's the cows just, they'll turn right back around and go right back in line. I'm not surprised. Right <laughs> yeah. They don't, they don't, they, they can't tell time, but they can tell what, what will trip oh, yeah. a trigger to bring them do. cookies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised at all. Some cows are smarter than others and they figure that out. So yeah. Uh, but the, the, I guess the point is, is, these animals are well cared for. Yeah. There are people that don't care for their animals. And when they do that, it's their loss because they're, they're not getting the most out of that, those animals that they possibly can. So uh, that's not necessarily, that's not a, a cultural sport thing. That is a mismanagement thing by, as you, I think started out in the very beginning, there are people that do that and, and make it look bad for everybody. And yeah. that's, that's what happens. I, I think that's probably the best way to end it is, it, it's not necessarily cruelty it's a mismanagement portion and yeah. not only because it's like if you weren't going to apply a, a pesticide or or fertilizer to a crop you are in fact causing stress to your animal and it's not going to create as as much meat production for you yeah. or 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 anything like that so yeah no i agree uh culture versus cru cruelty um, I think there's a lot of things that there's a lot of misnomers out there. There is a lot of information. Trust me, when I was going through a lot of this information and looking up uh, topics that I would think would counter what we would have to say, it's the same information just on multiple websites. And it seems like the same people are pulling the same information yeah. from one source. And it's very frustrating because it's not true. I don't know where a lot of their statistics are coming from. And again, I think it comes from they might have a couple individuals who have been caught and they filmed it or something and it's caused an uproar and so everybody points towards that one particular instance you know everybody remembers the boston tea party because they blew all the tea into the you know right. the, the harbor but nobody remembers all the other incidents of protests as well and it, it's right. one of those things where it's, it's it's a misnomer because it's it's an extenuating circumstance that brings all the attention to yeah. it keep pointing to one thing over and over and over again doesn't mean it's yeah. continuing to happen so yeah, yeah that's it gets a good point but well and you know Ultimately, you want to take care of these animals because they're going to pay you just like what you're going to get paid is just a thank you for stopping by. So thanks to your better paid.